Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to be talking about the materials that you need in a board that's gonna operate at high voltage. Now, high voltage can mean a number of different things. It can mean the AC voltage that's coming off a utility. It could mean a high DC voltage, could be operating at high current or at low current. So these are some of the things to consider when operating at high voltage. We're gonna look at what you need to know about high voltage materials to ensure reliability as well as manufacturability. Let's get started. So this video came about because we received a good question from a viewer asking about what happens to PCB materials when working at high voltages, specifically at 400 volts DC. Mortiza Gorbani writes, for universal AC inputs that use 400 VDC link, can we use FR4 materials? If not, how to find the proper ones? And one more question about the needed space between layers. So there's a few different things to unpack here and it all starts with selecting the right materials. So I'm gonna go into the material aspects first and some of the specific things that make high voltage materials appropriate for high voltage PCBs. So just to get started, first answer is yes, you will use standard FR4 grade materials for your high voltage PCB. Now remember, FR4 is a class of materials. It's not one specific material. It's really a designation. FR4 materials include a subset of materials that are appropriate for operating at high voltage. Now there are different qualification levels for different materials that makes them more appropriate for operating in certain voltage ranges. So to best understand that, we need to look at a few metrics that the PCB material world uses to qualify and categorize different materials for different voltage levels. So first things first, high voltage PCB materials are a lot like any other PCB material. They have a fiber weave structure. So this is the weave of fiberglass strands that is used to create the solidification within the board. And then you have a resin. And then the resin fills in all of the area between the fiberglass strands. Eventually you heat this up and cure it, and then it hardens and gives you a rigid PCB. So the resin is really the important piece here in a high voltage PCB material. Now the fiber matters as well, but it's not necessarily like the type of fiber. What actually matters with the fiber is the weave in the fiber. So the weave in the fiber matters because it determines the resin content. Now typically in a higher voltage material, what you'll see is a higher resin content than in other materials that you might use in high speed design. So that means that the fiber weave tends to be looser. So you may have seen some images of fiber weaves and some of the other videos that we've done on high speed design and stack ups and some of those things. So in those instances, we were talking a lot about high speed. In high speed, the fiber weave tends to be very tight. We don't want a lot of space in between the weaves that make up the PCB substrate. And with a high voltage PCB, we actually want a higher resin content. And getting to a higher resin content requires that you have more space between the fibers and that's what gives you more room for this resin. So you can get to a higher resin content on a volume basis. The next important component in a PCB material that's appropriate for high voltage is the curing agent. So the curing agent is what allows this thermoset resin to eventually harden and gives you the typical rigid PCB that you're familiar with. So there are principally two types of curing agents that are used in PCBs. So you have phenolic curing agents, and then you have DICY curing agents. So this is a very long chemical name. I apologize, I don't know the chemical name off the top of my head, but you can Google DICY and you will get the entire name of this particular chemical. Now, these two curing agents matter because they influence how the board forms a rigid structure and they will actually influence the long-term reliability of your PCB when running at a high voltage. Taken together, all of these materials then determine another important metric called the Comparative Tracking Index, or CTI. So the Comparative Tracking Index is divided into different levels, 
and different values are assigned to a comparative tracking index to delineate different appropriate voltage ranges where that material can be used. So I've got a table here I wanna show you that delineates all of these different ranges. So the CTI assigns a performance level category or performance level classification numbered zero through five. So five corresponds to the lowest voltage and then the lower numbers correspond to higher voltages. So it's an inverse scale. So if a material is being marketed as useful in a high voltage system, what they will do is they will list a CTI value or a comparative tracking index value in the data sheet. And so these are the six different comparative tracking index values that are used to delineate different voltage levels at DC. So if you look in the description, there's a blog that describes all of this. So I'd encourage you to go take a look at that high voltage materials blog because it explains the meaning of all of this. And essentially it relates to the reliability of the PCB laminate. So now what I'm doing is I'm looking in a data sheet here and we're gonna just kind of see what the difference is between these two data sheets. So I have a data sheet here for an ITEQ material and then I have another data sheet from the same company. So this particular data sheet, you can already tell with the applications list here, um, not necessarily intended for high voltage work. So you can see we've got stuff like high speed servers, smartphones, antennas. This is really a laminate that's intended for, uh, for operating at really high frequencies. And you can see here, you know, very low DF, relatively low DK, um, definitely intended for operating at high frequencies. And if you look through the list of specifications, you actually won't see a value for comparative tracking index. Now it has a value for the comparative tracking index, they just haven't listed it in the data sheet because frankly, this particular material is not being marketed for that type of application. Now take a look at this data sheet. Here in this data sheet, they're marketing this as a high reliability laminate and prepreg. And one thing that they note here is excellent CAF resistance. And so I'll get into what CAF is here in just a moment. But the other thing that they've done here in this particular data sheet is they actually show you the comparative tracking index as defined in these two uh, IEC and, uh, and uh, Underwriters Laboratory standards. And so you can see right here, it has a CTI level of three. So that classifies this as appropriate for use between 175 and 249 volts DC. So what exactly is the CTI value trying to tell you? Well, what it's doing is it's telling you the rate at which that laminate is going to degrade under that applied voltage range. Higher value CTIs will degrade at a lower voltage value. So when you have a high DC voltage applied across that laminate, that laminate will very slowly carbonize during its lifetime. And over time, that carbonization builds up and causes the laminate to degrade and eventually fail. If you're gonna be operating at higher voltage for an extended period of time, you then wanna make sure that you select a material that has the appropriate CTI value. Now there was something else that we saw in that data sheet, which is really important, especially for high reliability electronics and for electronics that are running at high DC voltages. And that was CAF failure. CAF stands for conductive anodic filamentation. We've talked about this in another video on non-functional pads. Now, this particular effect occurs when conductive filaments begin to grow between conductors in a PCB laminate. Now, the curing agent that is used in these laminates will help create a rigid substrate that will resist conductive anodic filamentation. So if you look at the blog that is linked in the description, Isola actually has some data that they published that looks at the reliability of some of their laminates that are cured with these different curing agents. And what they show in their data is that Phenolic curing actually produces higher reliability and greater resistance to CAF failure than DICY curing. If you're worried about conductive anodic filamentation, maybe you're building a high voltage system that needs to have some dense copper in it, 
The result is danger of conductive anodic filamentation. And a phenolic curing agent is going to help suppress that when you actually build your board. So this is where you also need to balance the weave style with the need for higher resin content. So the weave style tends to be a little lower in some of these laminates because you might want to have higher resin content. However, tighter weave style is gonna be more resistive to conductive anodic filamentation. Typical weave styles like 2113, 2116, or 1080 are gonna be fine in high voltage boards, but you could see a looser weave style like 106. So keep this in mind before you start selecting high voltage materials. You wanna make sure that you're gonna select something that is reliable over the long term, especially if it's operating continuously at high DC voltage. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in and watching this video. This is an area that I don't work in very often, but recently I actually had to jump in and start doing some high voltage design, and it's a lot of fun. These designs can be finicky, and one of the important aspects is, of course, reliability and safety. The stuff we've talked about here is really important for reliability, so to make sure to follow these guidelines and, of course, all of the great resources that we have in the description before you build your high voltage board. Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.